I don't know, just... So the Exorcist did scare me as a kid, but over the years, I, I, I'm i kind of got more numb to it. But I think as a horror film as a kid, I think one of the most enjoyable horror films that I love, that I still love to this day, that I found as scary, if not scarier, uh, The Howling. The Howling, I've heard of it. It's, it's the werewolf movie, right? Yep, 1981. Directed by Joe Dante. you never seen it? Yeah. I've heard of it, but I've, I have yet to see it. Oh, dude, you, you have to get it like ASAP. It is, in my opinion, one of the top three werewolf films ever made. I do know how, unfortunately, how The Howling ends, unfortunately. So, but, no, but, but maybe even, I should... Even still, you should go see it, because it's not a perfect yeah. film, but, man, the effects are groundbreaking. Even to this day, they're like the effects are amazing. Genuinely scary. It, it's one of my favorite werewolf films. I, I, actually, I'll even yeah. say... It's my favorite werewolf film. I think it's my favorite werewolf film of all time, The Howling. It it beats American World, in my opinion. It beats American World from London uh, by about a few feet. Hmm. Um, you know, and, and I like American World from London, but I think The Howling to me is, is it's a better werewolf film. I mean, it, it, opinions abound. People have to go back and forth on which one is the better film, but I'm more of a Howling person. I think it's scarier. I think the effects are better. Well, no, I mean, well, uh, opinion. It's opinion. I mean, the effects on both films are good. I prefer the ones in, in The Howling. Uh, I think it, it, it's got a very funny, humorous script. The, the fear, the scares are are, are um. More I've heard of Dark Soldiers, but I've yet to see that one. So, yeah, it's another good one too. Dark Soldiers. I've only seen it once. I had to see it again though, because I think I saw it the first time and I kind of liked it, but I was like, you know what? I don't know what the big deal is, but I think I missed something, so I definitely have to see it again. But yeah, but Dark Soldiers is, is, a, is a perennial favorite of a lot of people. Um, another good werewolf, werewolf film is uh, Bad Moon. I was gonna say Bad Moon was a, a good one to be honest, and I think I think the effects and there's despite the crappy morphing effects, I, they're still better than the ones if you saw Cursed, if you know what I'm talking uh, about. I, I do. Oh. Oh, let's not talk about that. That's a travesty of werewolf films. Let's not talk. Yeah, about I, that. I mean, I had some production problems itself. I have no idea. They casted like several actors. I don't know what the hell were they thinking when they did all that. Yeah, it was well, probably, I think it was Harvey Winston. I think Harvey Winston was one of the producers. So I wouldn't be surprised if he thought it was something was off, or he thought it wasn't to his liking. So who knows? Yeah, but you know what? A good werewolf film is still waiting to be made. And werewolves are—you can't do werewolf films in CGI. They have to be done practical. Yeah, I think the practical werewolf transformation, and everything is it just it, it it was it's it's the spectacle of seeing the man transform into the wolf and seeing the werewolf in action, like it's one of those creatures that doesn't translate well in CGI. Yeah, um, yeah, the the, the CGI effects and cursed were awful for the most part, but even even if the effects weren't perfect in uh, Bad Moon, at least they tried. At least it looked it looked pretty convincing. And I like the effects. You know, I that werewolf that werewolf was scary to me. I said to myself, "Would I be in the room with that werewolf?" And I thought about it. I said, "No, I'm jumping out the window. I'm not being in the room with that werewolf. Absolutely not. That that was a scary werewolf. Not not the most perfect effects, but they were good. I like the effects in that movie. See, yeah, the morphing effect was silly, but I thought the uh, the suit was good. The animatronics that brought the creature to life was not bad. It, to me, it was a very frightening, vicious werewolf. Yeah, and I think it only had well, the film's film's budget was like eight million, I think, maybe less. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was pretty well spent. I yeah. definitely enjoyed it. And I think the direction by Eric Red was pretty good. I mean, hell, he did a film called Body Parts. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Or, or, even, or are, are you familiar with Eric Red? Yes, I, I, I am. Yeah, yeah I, remember, I remember Body Parts. That was very controversial. Yeah, it got pulled because of the Dahmer killings. That yeah, pulled. that's right. I remember that, yes. And I was very tempted to buy the Blu-ray, but I didn't. I, I might buy it, but I ended up buying the film Wanted Dead or Alive and No Mercy, which had Richard Gere in it, so... Oh, uh, yes, yes. I didn't even know that film came out on Blu-ray, but it was it was a retro, v it was like a retro VHS cover Blu-ray type, so yeah. I was thinking after I'm done with everything regarding Road Warrior Drake, my second comic might be the, a sequel to my horror film, and the comic will contain werewolves. So I think mm -hmm. a good werewolf story is waiting to be told here in the States. Yeah. His Mega G mentioned Underworld because that also had uh, werewolves, but also had I, I yeah, I know people have, like Underworld is a big following for it. I I didn't care for it. Like uh, to me, again, werewolf 
and CGI doesn't mix. I, I need a good practical, frightening looking werewolf that's vicious and, and bloodthirsty. Yeah. I mean, there was uh, there was American Wolf in London, and there was the I guess somewhat updating tale called American Werewolf in Paris or something like that, which featured a very shitty CGI werewolf. Avoid that one like a plague. Yeah, even there was a different ending where apparently their baby was supposedly going to be uh, turning into a wolf or something like that. Right, right. You know, they had made a good. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess if you count dog soldiers, yeah. Um, and maybe Bad Moon, but werewolf films, good werewolf films, are hard to find in, in the recent years. Because all the best werewolf films came in the 80s. I mean, well, I mean of course, you got to consider Lon Chaney's Wolfman in 1940. But in the 80s, in the early 80s, in the span of like two years, you had The Howling, you had American Werewolf in London, you had Wolfen, which some people like. I've heard some mixed things on it. Yeah, some people liked it, some people didn't. Uh, but, you know, at the time, it was pretty much acclaimed. I think it's the lesser of the three films, but it's it's usually put there. And then, you know, Stephen King's Silver Bullet came out in 1983. That had a pretty underrated werewolf. Um, you know, it's not one of my favorites, but, you know, the, the practical scenes were pretty good in that movie. Uh, genuine good scares. Uh, and then, of course, Monster Squad had that, the, the Wolfman updated. And then you don't see a genuinely good werewolf film until 1996 with Bad Moon. Yeah, I'm glad that I was able to... Uh catch it on TV one time and left a good impression on me. I think it was despite the fact that even the film was pretty short, it was barely an hour and 20 minutes long. <laughs> no, it was, it was really short, very very well paced. Um, mm -hmm. You know, simple premise. It was based on actually, the, the book that it was based on, the book was called Thor. That's yeah, the Thor. It was, I, it was the, the, it's hard, I think it's hard to find. It was, I think the guy, guy's name is Wayne something, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, and the book was told from the dog's point of view. Which is funny. Yeah, but, oh yeah. So, so from the dog's point of view, I remember that. Yeah. Too as well. Because the dog is actually narrating the story in his head. Yeah. And and, and, and in the book, it just feels the dog views the family as his clan. So the so, so actually in the dog's view, that family is following him. It's his clan that he's protecting. So when the world yeah. comes into the into the picture, it's a territorial battle. Yeah. The. the Thor definitely can accept uh, the uncle that's turning into the wolf, pretty much. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And even Michael uh, Parr was actually uh, pretty solid in the film. I've, he I've seen a few other films. I, I, I have another one that I wish would get an official Blu-ray. It was called Moon Forty Four. If anyone even knows what I'm talking about, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's one of Roland Emmerich's earlier films. I have to admit, it, the, the, the setting, the environmental setting, and the sets kind of remind me of Alien and Blade Runner to some degree. But it's, Mecha but it's go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, finish your point. He, yeah, he was mentioning the Hammer films. You know, there was only one werewolf film that Hammer did. Uh, I think it was called Curse of the Wolf. Curse of the Werewolf. Um, I didn't. I didn't care for the design of the wolf myself. Um, but yeah, it's their only werewolf film. But I, I genuinely like Hammer films. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what did you think of the Howling sequels that followed after? Oh boy, you had to ruin the conversation, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, how, a lot of people. I know people. Some people didn't like the, the second one, but at least it had Christopher Lee in it, from what I understood. Well, actually, you, you know the story behind that is that Christopher Lee, when he, because you know, obviously Joe Dante directed the first film, mm -hmm. and then uh, Joe Dante directed uh, Gremlin and Gremlins Two, and yeah. Christopher Lee was cast in Gremlins Two. The story was that Christopher Lee approached Joe Dante on the set of Gremlins Two and apologized to him for being in Holland Two because that's how bad the film was. Well, I still probably watch it more than Howling Seven: New Moon Rising. That's going to be the worst one, right? Oh boy! Well, yeah, I mean, oh my gosh, the Howling films never get better. That's the thing. Like, I don't understand why make a series of werewolf films and not have werewolves in them. I don't get it. It just—it seems like a waste. And, and I think it was were a Howling Four, the Freaks. I think it was. No, Howling Six. Howling Six is the Freaks. Howling Five is the one that didn't. Uh, I guess he. I haven't seen it, but I hear a lot of praise for Howling for Howling Five. Yeah, yeah, I heard some interesting praise for it, but um, I don't know. I, I can't get into it. But okay, well, it was definitely Howling Four that had, I think, a very good werewolf design. But you barely saw it because they didn't shoot much of it. But it had a very good werewolf suit. From what I understood, even the fourth Howling movie, I think there was, it was based on a, a story or a book. I can't remember. So, yeah, no, okay, so it was based on the original novel of the first film. The first film, you know. The um the, the author of that novel he didn't like what they did with the first film the Howling, 
So yeah. I think so. I think he was involved in the making of the fourth film, which was a <laughs> retelling of the of the novel. And supposedly, it's more faithful to the novel. But it doesn't matter because the film is still boring to watch. So I, I didn't care for it. To me, the first film is just it's just a better horror film. Yeah, but from what I saw, the little melting of the guy was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was a good scene. That was actually one of the best practical shots in the series. That was that was actually very well done and very atmospheric. But that's basic. That's the only money shot in the movie, though. Yeah, basically the only scene that was worthy, pretty much. Yeah, because you look at the first film. Yeah, you had Robert Picardo's transformation, which was epic. But there's still some other shots in that movie too that are pretty well well done, like the werewolf. Uh, Attack scenes are, are, are pretty good, so there's a lot of scenes in the Howling that that aside from the Picardo shots, are still pretty good. You take away that Milking Man scene from Howling Four, and, and you left a, you have a very bland, dull, dull, boring film. Yeah, and apparently, I think Howling when Howling Seven tried to connect with that film or make reference to it. I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, all we know is it's a very awful movie. Probably one of the worst movies ever made. Wow, that was yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that movie was definitely a pain in the ass. Halloween 7. Halloween 7, New Moon Rising. <laughs> no, boy. 